We just thank you for the opportunity to gather here and worship your name, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh man. Just just want to uh, let the guys know, speaking to them right now, you still have five full days to come up with Christmas gift ideas. Just, just want to let you guys know, I have been that guy down to the last 20 minutes. I'm just saying. I'm not uh, bragging, but I got it done. You know, I don't, I don't want to say the wrong idea. But uh, <laughs> uh, Revelation 22, we are almost done. We're going to end up finishing at the new year here. Uh, so 2023 will ring in the new year <laughs> with something different there. Uh, but Revelation 22, we're just doing six verses. What's really cool uh, is if you if you have your Bibles and you, you take your finger, you've got chapter 22. If you look just up one verse, one verse before that in ch uh, chapter 21, verse 27, You'll see that there's nothing polluted. You guys see that? It says nothing polluted is allowed into heaven. I mean, hallelujah, right? <laughs> we don't we don't like that. But I wanted to show this picture here. Um, bear with me. Let, me. let me turn this off so we see a little better. Here's our here's our Africa um, 2018 photo. And one of the things that I've started to notice in California, yes, I'm bringing that. <laughs> but as uh, we go see my parents. It's starting, uh, the parks are starting to have more um, debris, shall we say. I have not encountered the whole, there's needles and drugs everywhere, thank goodness. Um, but there are um, elements starting to creep in. And one of the things about Africa, and Jeremiah seen this in Mexico, if you look in the background, or even at the foot here, a lot of other countries, they don't have garbage like we have garbage pickup. And so you just throw stuff everywhere. And I remember we get to Africa, and oh my goodness, what a shocker. And then Tony says, this is actually relatively clean <coughs> compared to India. Have you guys heard of their river? Their river system is also known as the bathroom, right? And so all over these countries, we're very blessed to have fairly clean, clean living environment. And look at chapter 22 here. Guys, heaven is just absolutely not only God's glory and just beautiful. There's no trash. There's no trash pickup. It's just completely clean. And I mean, wow. Uh, we're going to be saying wow a lot today because it's just incredible. But we see verse 27 last week, nothing is polluted. And not only that, chapter 22, we're going to go ahead and read these six verses. Uh, John says that, man, it not only is clean, it's just immaculate. What else is in there? Verse 1, chapter 22. There's a river. John has shown a river of water of life, clear as crystal, coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street, on either side of the river, was the tree of life, bearing 12 kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were the healing of nations. There shall no longer be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and the bond servants, that's us, we shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall no longer be any night. They shall not have any need of light of a lamp, nor the light of the sun. Why? Because the Lord shall illuminate them. They shall reign forever and ever. I mean, hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 6, I love this, I love this. He said to me, these words are faithful and true. How comforting. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophet, they sent his angel to show to his bond servants the things which must shortly take place. Amen? Man, that's your home, guys. For those of you who have trusted Christ, that's your home. Amen. Like I said, in a non-cult way. Let's just get out of here. <laughs> I, I was telling my, my mom and dad this week how excited I was. Like, that's our home. I can't believe it. And I said, yeah, I just want to get out of here. And she says, you know... Being from California, there was that Manson guy, and he really did try to take people with him. So in a non-cold way, amen, I can't wait to go, right? Dale, would you pray for us? Father, again, we thank you, Lord, for this time and opportunity to have a little bit before you. We thank you for this love and praise you, Lord. I do work in our hearts, in the mind of the enemy and the We thank you, Lord, for each and every blessing you bless us. We would be praised and Amen. Well, 
we're going to do a quick review because we had some PowerPoint trouble last week, and I wanted to show you guys what, uh, again, a human approximation of what heaven would look like, again, from our terms. Again, we're getting this from chapter 21. Um, David was working on his roof over the summer. He was working on a fence. Did you know measuring, measuring tapes, it's vital to the success of those projects. I did not know this. Um, but I was instrumental in pulling nails out. So I'm just saying, you, you have to have the dimensions of your home. Otherwise, you don't know how much room you have. Right? I mean, how many people are in heaven? So if you look at chapter 21, you'll see in verse 18, man, the city is laid out like a square. And there's 12 gates on all these sides. And so if we go ahead and flip to the next one, you'll see again, uh, right here it is. Uh, it, it's kind of like a Q-shaped um, city dwelling place. Now, I want to be very, very clear. Okay? I want to be very clear. I wrote this one down. Heaven is infinite because of God's glory. Amen? Amen. But where people can dwell, aka like downtown city, downtown New York or whatever, where a lot of people will be, is New Jerusalem. Okay? So one more time. It's infinite heaven. It is vast because of God's glory, but it's crown jewel. The center is New Jerusalem. Your home. And you can see, again, northeast, there's 12, 12, 12. And there's, uh, again, there's foundational stones. There's only one pearl on each gate. So can we flip to the next one? This is chapter 21, verse 20 and 21, okay? Where we see all these different jewels on the gates. Okay, I mean, look at these guys. This is just pretty. This is John trying to describe the sparkling, just absolute splendor of God's majesty. Are we ready to go? I mean, I just if we look at the if we look at the sun in the window right there, just it's pretty. God's glory just pours through throughout it, and this is the gates. And remember, we had that joke, right? We had we had uh, Trump was was really wanting to build the wall, and Mexico will pay for it. Jeremiah and I have seen it. It's only about thirty feet high. That's a fact. It's just it's like okay, but these gates not only are there a lot of them. But they're over 150 feet in the air. You're not getting in unless you have the Lamb's Book of Life, right? You're, you're not getting in because we need Jesus to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so not only are there 12 gates, but there's only one pearl on each gate. And that pearl is just so special because remember, you can only get a pearl that's pure from what? The oyster in the ocean, right? And, and we have that wound, right? That, that rubbing uh, in the ocean of the cut on the pearl. And so here's our reminder that by his wounds, you're here. Man, hallelujah. Only it's now it's his purest form. And so there we are. Absolute holiness is there. We've got our, our dwelling place. We've got our, our cube. You guys have a visual of all the splendor and absolute, just stunning, stunning, immaculate, heavenly home. I'm ready. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Let's go. And uh, again, worship is now normal. And if we remember the words of Jesus, John chapter 4, the woman at the well, now's the time in heaven where we can worship in spirit and in, and in truth. Man, here we are. Okay, so looking at chapter 22. Chapter 22, we've got verse 1. What else do we see? Well, we, get, we know there's no pollution. Verse 1, we see a river of water of life, and it's clear as crystal coming from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It's just completely clear. Uh, I know a real practical question here is we saw that there's no longer any sea in chapter 21. There's no water, right? Our existence is now different. There's a new heaven and new earth. So how on earth can we have a river of water of life? What is going on with that phrase? So if you have your notes, this is where you definitely want to want to write this down because it's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, we live in Oregon. And we know that we need a snowpack. The snow goes from a lake. Then the river, where does all the water end up going? It goes to the ocean, right? And we love looking at the ocean. It's beautiful. Uh, the, only, the only downfall about living in Oregon, you can't really like just spend hours in the ocean because you get really cold, right? I've, I've been down to, to San Diego. It's really nice being able to get in the ocean and not worry about dying of hypothermia. But here we are. We've got everything flows to the ocean. And what's happening in verse 1? Guys, God's glory emanates from the throne room and just completely, completely fills heaven as a current. And the current takes the water to the ocean, doesn't it? 
And so God's glory, where is it coming from? Look at verse 1. It's coming from the throne of who? Of God and the Lamb. That's Jesus. So we have this, this absolute glory, as you see that picture, just emanating and flowing down through heaven in his glory. It flows from the throne room itself, doesn't it? Man, hallelujah. And you see that it also is coming from the Lamb. Jesus is holy. There's an amen. Revelation chapter 1, we saw John. He sees, he sees Jesus. And what does he do in his glory? He falls down and worships. Falls down and worships. So everything emanates and it just completely takes it all the way out and fills heaven. So where's the center of life and God's glory? It's the throne room itself, isn't it? It's God himself. And it, and it just pours out and it's clear. Look at verse, at verse 1. It's clear as crystal. Again, if we look at the windows, the sun, per I mean, I perfectly timed that with the Lord today. I needed it to not be cloudy or foggy. And you see, it just flows out clear as crystal. We can just see it. There's no murkiness. There's nothing polluted that's blocking his glory. It's absolutely perfection. And here it just flows out like our ocean, right? It just the river takes it to the ocean. And I got to tell you guys, God's grace flows from the throne room, doesn't it? We would not be able to experience this if not for God sending Jesus. His glory, his mercy, his grace, everything just flows out of there. And there's no pollution at all. It's just completely crystal clear. Man, I want you to just bear with me here. But I'm not sure you guys realize uh, the Apostle John and how much he talks about water. Okay, but if we go back to John chapter 3, we all know John 3, 16, God's love the world. But remember, unless one's born again, count unto the kingdom of heaven. What does he say? It's unless you're what? Baptized with the water of the, that I give. John chapter 4, you can, you can drink from this well, but the, woman, the, the water I give, and it flows up through eternity. It's eternity itself. And so here's Jesus. Man, while he was on earth, Talking about not only his spiritual thirst that we have for uh, just being not broken, but it's also talking about heaven itself. It flows out of the throne room, guys. I mean, this is deep, isn't it? Deep as the water. <laughs> Man, absolutely stunning. One. Absolutely stunning. We've got the just the glory of God seen in the person of Jesus even while he was on earth. And then we see verse 2. What else is, what else is in our new home? Well, we've got a current of glory, and it's in the middle of the street. What else? We've got in the middle of the street this tree of life. And so the, the river is kind of going on either side, and it says that it, it yields. How much fruit? <coughs> twelve, not one. How many of you like raspberries? Imagine just having only raspberries. No, it's got twelve, right? Twelve different kinds of fruit, yielding fruit every single month. And the leaves of the tree were there for healing of nations. And again, I, I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't need to be healed because there's no pain in heaven. I mean, that's one of the reasons we all want to get out of here, right? My knees hurt, my back hurts, arthritis, whatever it is, cancer. Man, wait a minute, we're in heaven. How can we need healing? And that's where it's just absolutely stunning. But before we get to this, I want you to look at tree of life. I want you to circle that. Verse 2, tree of life. We've seen this before, haven't we? Genesis chapter 2 and 3, we had the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But there was also in the garden one, the tree of, tree of life. Okay, that one was untainted. And, and what that means here, guys, this is absolutely stunning, is because it's not a regular tree like we know it, because it's a new heaven and a new earth. This is a tree of blessing, folks. Absolute tree of blessing. We don't, we don't have any water in heaven because it's a new heaven and a new earth. So this is a different kind of tree. And uh, for Jews... For Jewish audience, okay, we're, we're in Douglas County. Trees mean something different to us. Dell and David know this, right? And David, trees mean something totally different to us. The city of Glendale has a different meaning for trees. You know what it is? It's called economic livelihood. If this mill were to close, this place is done. FYI, just so you guys know. Glide, I remember I got, I got hired in 09, and the first thing Pastor told me was people are still recovering from the closure of the mill. That was 10 years before because the school plummeted. You went from 800 kids, maybe 200. You had no jobs. So Douglas County, trees mean something different to us, don't they? Now, from California, Dell has seen my house where I grew up. 
There's one tree. My mom's doing the best she can to water it secretly at night because it's called a drought and you get taxed even more if you try to water it. Neighbors don't really have trees. In fact, you can't water your own yard down there because of the drought. And so people are doing all sorts of different architectural, architectural innovation to keep the value of their house up and they can't have water. So trees are very, very minimal. You don't have a lot of them. California means something different. You guys just got back from Florida. I hear trees mean something different down there. Usually some kind of hurricane <laughs> coming at you like duck, right? They, they can get, uh, palm trees can get uprooted. So trees, depending on where you are, they have a different context, different meaning. Verse 2, verse 2, it's all about blessing, guys, as you see there. It's glorious blessing. Look at those proverbs when you get a chance. All about God's blessing from trees. In fact, this is this will blow you away. John chapter 1, John chapter 1, Nathaniel comes to Jesus Christ. Jesus says, before you were even sitting under that tree, I knew you. And, and, and guys, the reason that meant so much to Nathaniel was because he was under a tree to a Jew. That means blessing. It was totally symbolic. Like, man, this is God talking to me right here. It's God's blessing upon my life. And so Jesus, of course, tells Nathaniel, man, you're going to see even greater things than this. And so here we have verse 2. Just an incredible, incredible, bearing 12 kinds of fruit. Just all this blessing, guys. Are you guys ready to go? I'm ready, man. Like, just more blessing upon blessing and not just any blessing. Look at this. How much, how much fruit? 12. Okay? I mean, some of you, maybe you're just apple people. I feel like I should bust out in a song, right? I like to eat, eat apples and bananas, right? What did you learn today in church? I don't know. The pastor is saying apples and bananas. Let's, uh, let's go through the vowels right now, right? But there's 12 kinds of them. I mean, our kids, I mean, you, you parents, you know this. The kids are little. We feel guilty that we give them candy. Because, you, know, eh, you know, I don't want them up too long. But I don't feel bad about giving them sugar that's good. That's good, right? Fruit, right? We'll give them a whole bunch of it. Corbin just loves, he loves uh, watermelon and cantaloupe. Hope, she's, you know, she's more like the peaches. Just, just, we love all sorts of different fruit, right? When you guys ask, can we come over for dinner, and, I, and you ask, what can we bring? I'll say you can bring a salad. But what kind of salad? A fruit salad, because I hate the other stuff, right? The green salad stuff. But I want you to bring a salad, a fruit salad, and you can throw all the fruit in there. It tastes amazing. Look at verse 2. It just it brings it every kind of month, all the time. Now, I want to pause here, and I want to give our guys another excellent Christmas gift idea. You guys ready? Okay, because it's Christmas time. This is, I know you're smiling, but I've learned the hard way. Okay, You can give people a subscription to something where they get something every month for 12 months. That's a great gift for your wives. Wink, wink, Justin. Okay, wink, wink, David. Or David could somehow look under guns and see if you could get a gun every month for 12 months. If you're like, that's what I want, honey. Sign me up, right? But you could do. I'm going to send my sister. Hopefully she doesn't watch this sermon. <laughs> you're going to give her a subscription for coffee because she's one of those... Coffee, you know, she's up there with the, she's not, she's not a nerd about it, but she likes a good cup of coffee. You know what I'm saying, wink, wink. Okay, I just drink it because it's okay, all right? I'm going to get her that. Tanya has one of the flowers, one, one new flower a month, don't you, honey? Of course, of course, right? <laughs> I am not publicly acknowledging that I got her that for Christmas, okay? But you guys get it. There's something with the variety. And here in verse 2, constant, constant variety of blessing. Amen. Are you guys ready? I, I mean, I can't even fathom that. Like, it's always great when you get a gift, but man, just constant, constant gifts every month. And again, time is kind of irrelevant because we're in, in absolute bliss with our, our Father and His glory emanating from the throne room. But man, it's amazing. The joy is just constantly developing. And if you look, it says it, 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 it's leaves from this tree are blessings, the healing of nations. Now, again, we're not in pain. We're not in mourning. We don't cry anymore. What does that mean? As you see on the screen, the idea of heal means uh, it's where we get the word therapy. Okay? It's a therapeutic. Now, Tanya will tell you that when you go to her facility, you'll do physical therapy, right, to build your knee up, to build your hip up. That is, it's already been replaced, but what are we doing? We're helping it get better, aren't we? We're, we're helping add to 
the work that's already been done. So in this context, guys, you have constant joy and blessings. And it's where we would get the idea that it's just constantly enriched, constant, constantly therapeutic. A real practical way. All of us are healthy. When we're healthy, we have our kids take vitamin C in the form of vitamins, right? The supplement. And so we get this here constantly coming in, and it's just constant, constant blessing. Joyous provision here. Joyous, filled with joyous provision and variety, changing constantly, but God's glory is just filling it. I mean, hey, man. Like, I'm ready. Let's get out of here. I can uh, Verse 3. Not only are we having that, there's no more curse. Now, there's an amen. amen. Genesis chapter 2 and 3. We're going over with the kids on, on Wednesday. Guys, all of the problems we're facing right now, violence in the cities, broken families, marriages, all the, the alcohol alone, the anger, it all emanates from the curse. You and I rebelled against God, didn't we? We wanted to do our, our thing, and unfortunately going our own way, it leads to destruction, doesn't it? And so Jesus has to come and break that curse. And here, there's no curse anymore. There's nothing tainted. I mean, hallelujah. <laughs> it's complete perfection. Verse 3, not only is there no curse, but the throne. Who's in the throne? Who's on the throne? God and the Lamb. Let well, back to church. Jesus Christ. I brought it here today because we're going to see it at our community service tonight. Jesus Christ is reigning right now. This isn't some Burger King, you can have it your way nonsense. Jesus Christ is reigning on the throne room right now. Let that fill you today. That he not only is reigning as our society falls apart, we don't even know what a man or woman is. We don't have a nuclear family anymore. Jesus Christ is on the throne room. And when we get there, there is no curse. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, man. And he's there. And it says in verse 3 that if that wasn't enough, his bond servants, that's us. Those who trust him, we get to serve him. We get to serve him. Your life in heaven will be serving a great, glorious king. Man, I can't wait. Can you imagine working for a boss that loves you? Some of you just, whoa, some of whoa. Some of you had some body language. I'm looking away right now. Wow. Okay. I, I mean, I had it. Was I didn't know it would be this profound. But imagine having a boss that loves you. Closing my eyes. Imagine having a company that cared about its employees. You're like, man, I can't. This doesn't resonate right now. <laughs> imagine doing a job you loved. Imagine all three of those together for all time. Now, ready for to have your minds blown? Are you ready? Imagine serving a glorious king who created you and created the world. The possibilities are infinite, are they not? Bear with me here. Bear with me. I lived in Oregon just, just shy of 17 years. This summer it will be 17 years. And I've seen Crater Lake once. And it was magnificent. Absolutely stunning. How many of us go to the coast every, every summer, every year, every chance we can? But have we seen everything on the ocean, the Oregon coast? No, the, the potential is limitless, isn't it? We can go all these pl places all the way, Astoria, Canyon Beach, but we've lived or grew up in Oregon, and we have yet to see all the vast beauty that it, it contains. Now, get to heaven, serving our Lord and Savior for infinite possibilities. Who created those things? Guys, I mean, amen, right? I can't wait. A boss that loves you, a boss that cares about you, a boss that names you. Look at verse 4. He's going to name you. You'll have a name on his forehead. You get to serve him forever and ever. Hallelujah. Fix your minds on that. Wow. Because some of us, I mean, we get home from work and we're like, man, I'm done. <laughs> I don't even want to go tomorrow. Man, it's going to be just astronomically amazing. Oh, man. That's true. I did do alliteration right there. Astronomically amazing. Verse 4. Not only will you get to serve him with blessings upon blessing. Not only with his glory just emanating, good to back this church, you get to see his face. Verse 4, you get to see the face of our Lord. Oh, man, you can't do that right now without dropping dead because of your sin. Isaiah, he got a minuscule glimpse, and he said the first thing, I'm undone. God's so holy and perfect, you would drop dead. Moses wanted to see the Lord and said, you can't. But I'll go through a cleft in a mountain, right? I'll, I'll kind of block the view. And people, when he walked out, saw 
the glory of God on Moses' face. That's the closest we can, we've ever come. What did the disciples do? Peter, James, John, they saw the transfiguration. Not really. They woke up from it because that's how much glory there was. And so here we get to see God's face. Man, did you just yearn to see that? Our Savior, finally, unobstructed. The, the, the Apostle Paul, why are you persecuting me? The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 13, what does he say? Man, we see it in a, just a mirror dimly right now. But one day it's all going to be revealed. Man, this should just blow you guys away. We finally get to see our Savior. And not only, I want to challenge you guys right now. We still, we're on this earth, so we still have time left. Not only do I want to see him, I want a hug that says, well done, good and faithful servant. That I did everything possible for Glendale to hear Jesus Christ, to disciple people. Right? That we did everything with our finances possible. Lord, I want as many people there so I can get that hug. Well done. Good, faithful sir. Man, that pushes me. That pushes me every day. I just want to see it. But man, you get to see the Lord. First John. First John. You see, I think I have it on there. Yeah, first John 3, 2, man. We, we are children of God. <coughs> but when we get there, what does John write to a different audience? To a different, 20 years before he writes this, we are children of God. It hasn't yet appeared what we will be. But we know that when he appears... We shall be like him. Why? Because we will see him in absolute perfect holiness. I mean, are you guys ready? Just get out of here. <laughs> Again, in a non-cult way. Let's just get out of here. Let's condense it, make it really simple. Wow. Amen. I get to see my Savior in absolute purity. The, the Puritan writer, you guys know I love them. George Whitfield, he, he's considered the second great awakening. So imagine Billy Graham. He led like 100,000 people to the Lord, which we know he did. Imagine he does that for a second time. That's George Whitfield. Just bear with me, guys. But just let this resonate deep down here. This is so profound. We get to have rest with our Savior. We get to have rest from our labors, rest from our dying bodies. But yet, but yet we're not done because we get to rest as we serve him. It's called blessed rest. Where we rest day and night by saying holy, holy, holy. Where we rest from sin, but not worship. <laughs> rest from suffering, but not comfort. Oh, blessed day when we're eternally embraced. In eternal rest with our Savior. And we get to see his face. Hallelujah. Man, does anybody else just want to cry? <laughs> Man, look at verse 4. We see his face. We have rest and you have a name. The Antichrist didn't give you a name, did he? Mm -hmm. He gave you a stupid number. You're nothing more than a number. He doesn't care about you. It's fake worship. If you don't worship me, you're going to be killed. It's fake everything. You had a mark. A mark on your head or forehead. What disgustingness. You're nothing. You're reduced to a number. You feel that way at work sometimes, don't you? Clock in, clock out. You feel that way sometimes with the school system, right? You have to register email and account number, right? It's just like you're reduced. Excuse me, you're reduced to this just no value. And here you are, verse 4, in the arms of our Savior. You see him, and he gives you a name. Man, I just can't wait. <laughs> verse 5, if that wasn't enough, look at verse 5. There's no longer a day or night. You don't need a light. Because, why? Circle that. Because the Lord God, He is the light. There's an amen, right? He illuminates it, and you will reign forever and ever. I believe Jesus Christ said, I am the light of the world. Not only is He physically on the light of the world, but Jesus Christ is the light. And that brings me today. I hope, I, I, I hope this just speaks to you today. It's in both heaven, guys. Heaven in its eternal form is seen in the person of Jesus Christ. I mean, amen. Heaven in its eternal form is seen in the person of Jesus Christ. When you read the Gospels, and I encourage you to read those all the time, but if you were to read starting in Matthew, Mark, whatever, this week, and you think of that, Jesus, as he's on earth, and it's his eternal heavenly form, I'm seeing heaven as I see Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> That'll put a new spin on it, won't it? But remember Colossians 1. He's the image of the invisible. He's the firstborn over all. 
And there he is in eternal form. And he's filling heaven with his glory. I mean, wow. Let's just get ready, guys, right? Wow. I mean, I just can't fathom this right now. And not only that, but verse 5, what else does it say? You're going to reign with him forever and ever. Hallelujah. Doesn't it seem right now in America it falls apart? We lack morality. We see. Kind of feels like our vote doesn't matter. Right? We get that sense that, like, I'm just kind of some weird pollsters like number in a big system not here not in our new home you will reign forever and ever he personally knows you and you will personally serve him there's no curse you're constantly filled with blessings all the time man let's get out of here <laughs> wow i mean just i can't ever say it enough turn your eyes upon jesus for the things of earth will grow strangely to him. In the light of what? His glory and his grace. Glendale well, Baptist Church, you need more Jesus. Because you're going to spend eternity with him. And here it is, just completely filling it. I mean, I, this, this literally, this passage has something for everyone, right? You have identity. You have purpose. Whereas maybe you don't feel that way right now. You're going to have constant joy. Maybe right now you don't feel like there's any joy during this Christmas time. Yet that's what heaven is completely full of. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Because heaven's eternal form is seen in the person of Jesus Christ. And I, I, I got to tell you, I was thinking of, no, I was thinking of you, because we recently bought cars. You guys bought a car? You ever bought a car, right? I mean, let's just be honest. We've heard the old adage for salesmen. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. I mean, I was thinking this. I, I mean, I, I didn't break down and cry, but I'm going through this like, man, Lord, we don't deserve any of this. It's God's grace that we can even sort of taste some of this. Because of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sin. But I seriously said, Lord, this is too good to be true. I mean, you were telling me about your truck. If it's not this price, when I get up there, we done. And I remember Tony and I were just trying to buy a basic Volkswagen so we can get our kids to school. We're not trying to be fancy. This should be the final price. What happens? We get there. Whoa. I'm not signing this. This is like 3000 more than what we just talked about literally on the lot. Oh, well, you know, you have to have the warranty. Oh, no, you have to have it. It sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? Look at verse 6. It sounds too good to be true. He said to me, this is faithful and true. Amen? <laughs> it's like he knew what we were thinking. There's no way we can have all this awesome stuff, this joy and blessing unending in God's glory, reigning with him in identity. This is faithful and true. One more time, Glendale Baptist Church, this is faithful and true. Which means what? It's trustworthy in Greek. It is literally truth itself. Wow. <laughs> he knew exactly what we were thinking. No way. A sinner like me could be blessed in this capacity. There's no way I could see the face of God. Yes, it is true. And it's faithful and true. What a coincidence. Chapter 19. Jesus comes down. He has a name. He's got a sharp sword. He's got a name. He's sitting upon a horse of purity. What's his name? Faithful and true. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 1. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I am faithful and true. The night in which he's betrayed. I am the way. The truth. And the life. No one comes to the Father. And here it is. The Lord Jesus Christ is faithful and true. I want to encourage you today as we close. Man, next week is our Savior's birthday. And I'll go be here worshiping even if it's just Tony and I. But man, happy birthday, Jesus. That he would give us this kind of home with unending blessing. And it's because we did not deserve it. It's all about his glory. It's all about his son who was obedient even unto death on a cross for you and for me. Man, Jesus is faithful and true. And you'll notice in verse 6, it's coming very quickly, isn't it? We're seeing it now in America, right? Now we don't even know what a, a, a male or female is anymore. Yeah, so biology's out the window. We don't have nuclear family. It's coming real fast. I can't wait to get to my home. <laughs> I can't wait. But at the same time, it breaks our heart, doesn't it? Because there will be some people that are not with us. Oh, man. 
And it says here in verse 6, God sent the prophets. He sent angels. He sent servants so that they would know it's coming. There will be no excuse, folks. That should break our hearts, shouldn't it? Man, I can't wait to worship the Lord uh, and his birthday, obviously, right now, of course. But, man, next week, Merry Christmas. Happy birthday, Jesus. Boy, are you guys ready for your home? <laughs> man, let's 